Edward Gibbon wrote his first history of ancient Rome in 1764 CE, almost 270 years ago. Some people might ask, why then there are 10,000 results on Amazon for histories of ancient Rome, including Mary Beard's SPQR that was written in 2016. Scrolling through the list, you can find all sorts of different books. Some of them focus on specific topics, but many of them are an overall history of ancient Rome. Why are there so many? Why are there even some that have been published three times with changes each time? If the history of Rome ended almost 1,500 years ago when the empire collapsed in 476, how can we be discovering so much new now? What new ideas could there possibly be to write about that haven't already been explored since Gibbon's book almost 260 years ago? That's the question that Mary Beard attempts to address in this paragraph. She points out that the history is constantly changing. That doesn't seem to make sense when all of these things are done and have happened in the long distant past. It's not that someone has gone back in time to change the history, and it's not necessarily that we're smarter than the historians who came a hundred or two hundred years before us. Partly, it's because we are discovering new artifacts all the time. More so, though, it's because we look in different ways at the same old evidence. We care about different things and focus on different questions. In the year 2019, we're much more concerned about new issues that matter to us than, we, than people who lived 100 years ago or 50 years ago might have been worried about. For example, consider these four types of historians. Each of them would have a very different reason for studying ancient Rome. They would look for different types of sources, they would focus on the experience of different individuals, and they would likely draw very different conclusions. Some might look at the Romans as a positive example, like an economist who's studying the way the Romans were able to unite an empire through trade and road systems, creating regulations that we still tend to follow today. Others might look at them as a warning, like a political scientist who's too, so focused on the conflict in politics today and can find examples in ancient Rome about the civil war that tore them apart and created the Roman Empire in the first century BCE. All of these help shape the way we think about Rome today and make it so important for us to constantly revisit the past as a way to interpret the present and prepare for the future. Remember that it is that objective which is at the core of our 7th grade social studies class.